two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with uh, Shaggy Life Podcast. Thought I would squeeze an episode in for you guys this week. It might end up being short. I don't know. We'll see. I could end up rambling. You never know. Uh, if you guys are listening to the podcast, don't forget you can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker and see me waving at you. And if the video looks a little different than it has in the past, it's because I have the new iPhone 16 Pro and I've got it going right now and I've got it in the cinematic video mode, which uh, I'm kind of playing around with here which is kind of cool. It kind of fuzzies out the background. As I get further away, it kind of gets clearer. As I get closer, it gets blurrier. I don't know. It's kind of cool, but uh, it's got a new video phone button on the side that I'm trying to figure out. haven't quite got it figured out yet. And so um, playing around with, uh, and it's got a lot of settings. So uh, over the next few months, I'll be playing around with a lot of the new video settings. So hopefully my videos and my photos, especially the ones in the morning, will uh, start getting a lot better. Don't forget that I do post a lot of morning sunrises, and I've been doing a lot of uh, short uh, 30 seconds vertical video sunrises been posting those on just about everything but uh, trying to get something going on TikTok so you guys can follow me on the Curtis Tucker on TikTok uh, go check out the videos and the songs and let me know what you think about those and if you guys are watching me on the YouTube channel don't forget that you can listen to the podcast episodes on your favorite podcasting app while you guys are running or driving or sleeping or uh, doing whatever and please subscribe to the podcast subscribe to the YouTube channel help me uh, make some money speaking of money I do have the Art O'Rooney uh, t-shirt store going and it is at art rooney.com that's r-o-o-n-i-e art rooney.com or art dash o dash rooney.com that's a takeoff on uh, an old 70s term call it was cooler rooney so i changed it to art rooney but i do have uh, some t-shirts on there i will be adding a ton uh, more designs. A lot of them will be 70s related. A lot of them will be kind of uh, retro, uh, mid-century modern, cartoony, pop art, uh, that type of style. And I've got stickers. I won't be selling stickers on that website as of right now, but um, I do have a lot of stickers in. I will be sending out stickers to the people uh, that I've said I would be sending stickers to. So uh, remind me if I was supposed to send you stickers. Uh, email is shags at shaggyduck.com or curtis at curtistucker.com. I'll get email at both of those. But uh, you guys, I uh, appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. And I really want to keep it going. I'm just always looking for different ideas. And uh, I've been thinking of a few, but you guys send me some show ideas, some things I can talk about or go do. If you guys want me to go do something, I can check that out. Somebody did uh, suggest that I film myself uh, the entire way on the trail. So I think I'm thinking about doing that. I just have to get the, uh, oh, the audio set up and then I'll just video basically me leaving my house and then going all the way out to the trail and that's usually about a 40 minute uh, deal and then I won't I won't film going back and forth and then coming all the way back in but uh, for about 40 minutes I can show you the exact route that I take on the trail every morning uh, it ends up I think right now I'm at about seven and a half miles uh, 16,000 steps every morning but that's where I get all of my sunrise photos and do a lot of thinking get my exercise uh, get my outdoor all that good stuff out there. So uh, have that coming up hopefully soon. So tonight's episode, um, I had done an Enid Buzz podcast, and while I had everything set up, I hated to sh shut it all down without doing a Shaggy Live podcast. So I thought, what can I podcast about? And I didn't have any ideas off the top of my head. And so this is totally unprepared. Um, but what I do have is... 
Um, I started CurtisTucker.com quite a long time ago. I think maybe 2004, maybe 2005, somewhere, somewhere way back when. And so I used to blog uh, way back then. And then I got busy with other stuff and pretty much kind of left it alone for like a long time. Hang on, I'm going to get me a drink and cough here. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it was about maybe 10 years. I might have just kind of let it sit for 10 years. And so uh, everything that I've been blogging about before all got deleted. But the cool thing is if you go to uh, the Wayback Machine, if you uh, Google Wayback Machine, there's this website that if you type in a, a URL of a website like curtistucker.com or go to your, you know, go and type in your favorite website, it'll bring up your old, what your old website used to look like through the years. And so uh, sometimes there's a lot of pages missing uh, from some websites, especially websites that are database driven. Um, but there are some pages there. So there is quite there are quite a few pages of my old blog left um, and this one it's dated 2008 2009 uh, even though I think I started the blog well before that but anyway so there are some blog posts from like I say 2008 2009 and um, so every now and then I go through there looking for ideas and I just happen to run across uh, a post that I thought I would uh, do for Shaggy Life tonight. And again, this might not go very long or it could end up going long. I'm look at, looking at what the next post is. Um, but okay, so it is title and it says it is from Monday, February 16th, 2009. So this is uh, that's, uh, quite a few years back. And it says, the title of the blog post is Things We Shouldn't Have Done As Kids. And, of course, I was uh, kind of a daddy's 70s entrepreneur blogger, which i that's kind of what I do now still. So this is basically the things that we probably should not have done that we did in the 70s. And... Um, you know, looking at today's world, you know, we've got a lot of safety lids on everything, uh, safety on containers and uh, packages, and we've got seatbelt laws and restrictions on what kids can and can't do and things that people can and can't do, things that we just took for granted and did all the time back in the 70s. But um, they're trying to make it a lot safer world. Sometimes I look back and wonder how did we all live through the 70s and how are we all alive today? I mean, we were, uh, you know, letting firecrackers explode pretty much in our hands and jumping off garage roofs at 12 years old and uh, just all kinds of stuff. So anyway, this is a list and I haven't really even read over it. I'm going to be reading over it like right now. Um, and uh, again, it's a list of things we shouldn't have done as kids, but we did them and it looks like we survived. Number one, like most kids, we snuck out while spending the night at a friend's house. The danger here was that uh, we would have it would have been 2 a.m. in the morning and we were between the ages of 9 and 12. And so yeah, I remember I remember spending the night at a, uh, one of my friends Steve Ropp's house and we were really young then. That's probably when we were around 9 uh, 9 or 10. And we snuck out of the house. I remember he, he, they had a basement with a fireplace. And when his parents went to, I think he had a birthday party, and maybe five of us spent the night. And uh, one of the things we did was throwing everything we could find into the fireplace, which probably was not too smart because, you know, there was plastics and probably things that uh, should not have been thrown in the fire. But once we got bored with that, we did sneak out of his house. And I think because we were so little uh, back then, and I think his parents would have really gotten on to us, we only snuck out into the backyard, and I don't think we were out there very long. But I believe 
uh, like I say, I think I was probably about nine. I think that's probably the first time that I ever spent the night with somebody and snuck out. And then later, uh, as we uh, got a little older, probably 13, uh, 13, 14, uh, we'd spend the night over at Todd's house. And, you know, I don't know that it was really sneaking out. I don't think it's parents would have mind, but uh, we would spend the night over there, and then when his parents would go to sleep, we would leave and not tell them, meaning we'd kind of sneak out, and we'd go down to Waller Junior High, and uh, we'd just kind of tool around there and do kinds of, uh, all kinds of goofy stuff, and uh, basically, a lot of times, try to scare ourselves of what uh, could happen if we stayed out there. Um, number two, roofs. We climbed onto or out on every roof we could find. In grade school, we would climb on the top of the school roof to retrieve any dodgeball that might have been lost earlier in the day. Yeah, so like I say, I remember uh, going over to some friend's house and uh, we would get on, a lot of times we'd climb on garage roofs, which are still probably eight, 10, you know, by the time you get down to the ledge, it's still probably 10, 10, 12 foot maybe. I mean, and as, you know, 10, 11, 12 year olds, we were still, we would jump off those. And of course our bones were uh, a little more pliable and we uh, didn't weigh quite as much. So we got away with it. Uh, but yeah, and then there was the old uh, going to uh, grade school at McKinley. And if we needed a new dodgeball for trampoline dodgeball, uh, somehow we would accidentally throw or kick the uh, utility ball onto the roof of the school and then uh, later that day we would uh, go down the alley and there was this uh, I think it was a air conditioner we could climb on and it got us about halfway up to the roof we had to climb over a chain link fence to get to it but then once we got on it there was like some pipes and wiring uh, in a in the corner of the brick wall and then we would kind of shimmy up that and get on the roof and then uh, snag the ball, take it home. I know, not good, not kosher, theft. Uh, Staten and I are planning on buying a whole bunch of new, uh, hopefully, playground equipment for McKinley here one of these days to, uh, and I hope the uh, statute of limitations has run out. Uh, number three, we actually used to slide down the valley of our two-story roof on a Frisbee. We would sit on the Frisbee and slide almost to the end of the ridge. And at the last moment, we would use our feet, just stop before plummeting off the edge and falling two stories to the ground. Yeah, that was my house over on West Broadway. Um, of course, I had the entire upstairs to myself. And at the back of the house, there was a window you could climb out and it led to the, the shorter roof that was over the back porch. And then you could walk across that roof and get on on the regular roof and go all the way up to the peak of the house. And then there was a valley that went from the very top of the house down to the front of the house. And that's where we would sit on a Frisbee. And usually I think it was Staten and I, and we would slide down the Frisbee because on that, uh, the uh, composition uh, shingles, it, you know, it was basically kind of like gravel. Uh, it was really slick, and so you could get going pretty fast. And I kind of remember wearing the uh, Frisbee out. So we did it enough that um, it started to wear holes in the plastic. So probably not uh, good on those shingles. I'm sure they don't didn't have any of the uh, gravel left on them. But uh, we were kids, and we didn't know any better. So... Um, Number four, we would sometimes sneak the trampoline close to the garage so we could jump off the roof on it. Yeah, um, that was only when Staten's parents were gone, and we had to do that very quickly. And his garage roof uh, had a lower area on it, so we weren't really, it was probably maybe only seven eight foot high and then when you jumped off that onto the trampoline you know the trampoline's like three foot off the ground anyway um so you know it wasn't really that huge of a deal the only thing was you know once you jumped off and hit the trampoline you had to keep from going off the trampoline and killing yourself on the ground because back in that day uh, trampolines did not come with nets and 
uh, Staten's pads, uh, we got rid of those way, way in the beginning. So, um, so you could fly off the trampoline really easy. Number five, we spent many an afternoon winding through the drainage tunnels under our town. Many times we would get several blocks underneath the street. Of course, nobody knew we were there in case we ever got stuck. Yeah, um, that was going down into the tunnels. Uh, that was always fun. It was kind of a, there was a, uh, basically it's Boggy Creek and it would go under one area of town and we would kind of just kind of duck and crawl through there as far as we could and we had an area we called Spider Tunnel because it was round and uh, we'd only go so far though we it would start to get really dark and you couldn't see anything and then we'd start wondering if there was Back in that day, we weren't ever like really afraid of like monsters or animals. We were afraid of junkies for some weird reason. We were always thinking there might be a junkie down there. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, you know, if if it had ever rained and flooded or you know something like that, we'd uh, we'd have been goners. Um, number six, fire. I kind of alluded to this before. A really bad one. We set a few things on fire that we probably should not have, especially at the houses that we had fireplaces. Uh, anything plastic was meant to melt. Yeah, uh, again, I remember uh, using Steve's fireplace. And then I think Eric uh, and I got caught in his attic uh, burning G.I. Joe's one time. His mom could smell the plastic and uh, you know, she really let us have it because we were up there burning things in the attic, which really could have burned the house down pretty quick. So fire was uh, pretty fascinating uh, to us as kids back in the 70s. Number seven, climbing trees. We used to climb some trees as high uh, as the branches were and could barely hold our own weight. I remember feeling a few trees leaning so far that I thought I was going to be a goner. And I think most of those trees that we got really high on were these um, like really skinny cedar trees at Brendan's house. And uh, they had lots of limbs, so they were easy to climb other than, you know, getting poked and getting that cedar smell on you. But um, you could get really high. The only thing is the higher you got, the more they would kind of start to droop with you on them but um yeah i do remember as a as a kid and then you know there was big maple trees that you know we would climb as high as we could yeah, i remember getting you know so high sometimes wondering how i was going to get back down but uh that was always fun i'm surprised as far as i remember uh now i remember people flying off the trampoline and getting injured uh, I don't remember anybody really ever falling out of a tree and getting hurt. Um, number eight, throwing things at cars. Yeah, we had a ritual of throwing eggs and snowballs at cars. Our biggest problem there was that we usually threw from the front of one of our houses and the people that got hit knew where to come find us. Yeah, there was a period there where uh, on the house on Broadway, it's like we would meet. My mom was working out at the NCO club at uh, Vance Air Force Base on the weekends. And so uh, my sister and I had the house to ourselves on the weekends. And, and there was a convenience store, Fitzsimmons, where I used to buy my Jolly Ranchers behind our house. And so we would go there and buy a dozen eggs and then throw them at the cars going down Broadway. And then uh, every now and then, if, if there was a good snow, we would get on Brendan's. Uh, he had the, the mansion that was uh, three stories high. We would get on the, you could go out um, Carol's door onto the second floor balcony. And the, if it snowed good enough, there would be snow up there on the balcony. And so you could make snowballs and we would chunk those at cars going down Broadway down there. And then I remember us throwing... Um, those snap and pops, uh, kind of filled with uh, sand and and something that that made them pop, and we would throw those uh, at cars on Broadway sometimes. And we got one car uh, really well, and I think I've told the story where uh, the guy was so mad he got out, and we had all our banana seat bikes, uh, of course, parked there in front of Brendan's house, and he took to throwing them all over the yard and so they ended up scattered all over the place. Uh, number nine, pool hopping. 
Uh, many times we would get a group of guys together and go from pool to pool, hopping and running like heck. Uh, we would hit the hotel pools here in Enid and then as many backyard pools as we could. Yeah, now that was when we got older. That, I'd have to say, we were probably 16, 17 in the late 70s because um, seems like the only time we did that was when we had a vehicle and it was usually a truck so there'd usually be about eight of us six to eight of us and um, we would pull up to somebody's house we would all run jump over the fence and um, jump into the water as soon as you everybody got wet we would jump out and then run back to the the truck and then go to like a hotel pool and go jump into their pool and then get back in the truck and we try to hit as many pools as we could and uh, lots of stories there, uh, lots of falling down, lots of people screaming and yelling and um, uh, people staring at us from windows at the hotels. Um, there was a country club pool. There's a lot of fence hopping, things like that. Yeah, just uh, pretty lucky that we did not um, get caught uh, doing that. I don't know that we got in real bad trouble. Uh, number 10, sledding down hills on pieces of cardboard. Um, this one, I do remember that we were sledding down the hill by Boggy Creek, and I uh, went over a broken bottle on a, I don't, I, I was on a piece of cardboard, but I think my knee was off the cardboard and went over that broken glass and uh, sliced my leg open in two spots and ended up having to go to the emergency room on base and got um, six stitches total, three uh, kind of down on my shin and then three up by my knee. And so uh, that was usually the most dangerous thing on sledding uh, was just avoiding stuff at the bottom of the creek. Uh, number 11 uh, says I may add more to this list as I remember. Uh, one thing that I, I do remember, um, now this again, we were a little older, probably 16, 17. Um, we had fire extinguishers. Todd and I both had fire extinguishers that were just uh, metal canisters that you could fill up uh, about halfway with water and then you'd fill you would hook up a, a air pump and it would pressurize the water and I mean you could get water to squirt I don't know 30 40 feet it it went uh, it went a long quite a long maybe even longer it went quite a ways but we would drive around in somebody's car and uh, squirt people with the fire extinguishers and we uh, we did get chased a lot and uh, luckily we never got caught but uh, had we gotten caught we probably would have all gotten beat up but uh, that was another dangerous thing that we probably should not have done so that is my list um, from 2009 uh, just thinking back I'm trying to think if there was anything else kind of uh, crazy that we did that we shouldn't have done as kids um, that would have got us, you know, injured. And I can't really think. Um, I think I remember one time me and Eric, uh, it had rained and we had this big drainage ditch that was supposed to help uh, Enid from ever flooding again. And so heavy, heavy, heavy rain would cause it to flow like a river. And uh, I think I remember one time he and I were walking by it after a heavy rain and there was a picnic table in it and it was floating upside down. And he and I got in and uh, went floating a little ways on that picnic table, but um, could easily probably got swept away or... Um, probably should not have been in the water on the picnic table. And, um, oh, maybe crossing, there's a, a Metal Lake Park. We've got a, a train. It's kind of a, it's more of a ride, but it's like a big train where it's, you know, got actual train cars where people can sit in. You know, you can get like 50 people in the back of this. Um, but it goes across a bridge actually goes across two bridges across Meadow Lake. And um, so one of the things we used to do is, it, you know, the sign would say, don't walk across the bridge. Well, 
course we would walk across a bridge usually we didn't try to cross it when the train was coming you know and like i said it was a little train but not like a toy train it was like a big train that you know it could run over you but it wasn't a full-size train um but um but you know we i don't think we were ever concerned about getting hit by the train but it was more of there was no guardrails or railing and um i think at one point way back in the day i think you know there was space in between the the um wood on the thing so there was always a chance of slipping not that you'd slip through but your foot Uh, could slip into that but anyway those are some of the wild things we did um, in the 70s that I can remember that uh, we probably shouldn't have done Um, I really wish kids of today um, could experience some of the fun things uh, that we got to do but then on the other hand um, uh, probably better that a lot of the kids don't get to do some of the things that we did uh, because like I say I think we got fairly lucky um, that we got out without getting that injured. I'm trying to think. I can't think of anybody that really ever got, uh, you know, we'd skateboarded, we rode uh, wheelies on our uh, banana seat bikes, but I don't remember. Uh, we, You know, we would jump things. We'd make ramps. That was another thing. We would uh, set up ramps and jump. And I think Eric Wright, uh, I think they were working on a house and they had... Um, left a pile of sand in the street and I'm talking like a four foot pile of sand but then off to the edge of it I think there was like maybe a two foot pile of sand I remember Eric Wright one time riding his bike and jumping that smaller pile of sand and landing in the street and not making it not landing correctly and I think I don't know for some reason I think he might have chipped his tooth um, doing that, but uh, I don't remember anybody ever really getting hurt uh, too bad on skateboards. Although we didn't, uh, we were never doing major tricks or anything like that. Um, so, anyway, that's my list. You guys, let me know uh, some of the crazy stuff you guys did. I know uh, in different areas of the country there was probably um, different things. Now, uh, real quick, I did I did remember another thing. So, living in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, we have a lot of wheat fields and then other fields, but I remember uh, a couple times when some of us would go out with Staten's dad to check on a well or something. Um, we would play a game where one of us would run out into the wheat field and basically just lay down and hide, and then either the other guy or the other two guys would be on the dirt road and we would pick up dirt clods and rocks and just start chunking them into the field, uh, hoping we would hit whoever was in the wheat field. And I don't remember us ever hitting anybody, but uh, had we uh, knocked somebody in the head, uh, that would have been kind of painful. So that was another uh, kind of fun thing that we used to do. So uh, there is my list. And I will try to reproduce this list um, again and type it out on uh, CurtisTucker.com. So don't forget, you can go to CurtisTucker.com and you can read the blog post there. You can go to YouTube.com slash CurtisTucker. You can see the video there or you can go to your favorite podcasting apps and listen to the audio there. So I'm trying to cover you guys every which way that I can. Uh, One of these days I may do an episode on all the cool new features of this iPhone. I'm really liking this um, cinematic look. Um, It's got this thing following my face around. But uh, anyway, it's kind of a cool deal. Guys, let me know what you think. You can hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com or curtis at curtistucker.com. Please subscribe to all of my things out there. Uh, Send me show ideas. Let me know what you guys have been up to. And I will check you guys later. See ya. 